Hi, everyone. My name is Matt Haynes. I'm an audiobook narrator, and this is part of my ongoing series of accent and voice impersonations studies. Because I narrate audiobooks, there's a whole range of characters that I need to uh, voice. Uh, so getting different types of voices from celebrities is something that I do for impersonations, using those as a jumping off point for the characters. And then also accents, accents, accents. So what I'm offering here is both a study for you and for me. I'm going to give you some tips that I'm noticing from the accent of the month. And then I'm going to ask you to, if you are familiar with the accent, put in your comments some answers to questions that I might have. I'm going to upload a video once a month for the Brazilian accent revisited. Now, why once a month? Because rather than do it all in one shot or do um, all the videos in just one month, I want to give you time to find these videos and respond to them. So going back to Brazil, return I will to old Brazil, because there's a book that I'm about to start production on that has a Brazilian uh, accent in it, a character that is talking in Brazilian Portuguese and uh, to indicate that uh, during um, uh, with the English, I'm going to apply the uh, Brazil accent just to just give them that, um, that indication. Very similar to uh, David Cronenberg's Eastern Promises, where the characters are uh, speaking Russian to each other, but really they're speaking English with a Russian accent. Mm, that sort of thing. OK, so principles of Brazilian that I'm noticing so far, um, the words that end with T, like what sometimes have. And this is a T or other hard consonants. Words that end in T or hard consonants tend to have a little bit of an uh at the end, a little puff, a little uh. So what is what? The um, very similar to uh, the stereotype of Italian. Hey, when are we going to go uh, to the store? <laughs> I added a uh, to the uh, O, but um, oh well, anyway. Uh, so uh, then we have, um, rather than an R at the end of the word being thrilled, for example, fear, I would normally say fear. Uh, if I were uh, doing an accent outside of the U.S., that's in one of the... Um, uh, one of the Romance uh, languages, uh, such as um, Italian or uh, so forth, um, I would put er, 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 the trilled R. Now, with uh, Brazil, what I'm getting is a hard R. So fear is not fear, but fear. Um, the A becomes an E, something that I notice more in Eastern Europe uh, accents than um uh, than accents such as Italian or Spanish or uh, or others um, from Western Europe and Central South America. But the A becomes an E, so have hev. Now, here's another thing that I'm noticing. Um, the E, uh, as in sun, becomes an A sometimes, but when else? I, I haven't been able to figure that out. It doesn't seem like there's a consistent rule. Like, for example, if it's spelled with a U, uh, then it becomes an A. Ah, but if it's spelled with an O, as in come, it becomes com um, or love, love. Um, so uh, I, I don't know exactly when. I know that I heard san, but then um, I've heard other words that become an O when the uh sound is applied. Help me with that. Then we also have the I becoming an E and the E becoming an I. So give, give, um, it, eat. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then we also have the um, E becoming an I. So feed, feed. All right. So that's what I've got so far. I'm going to be continuing next month with uh, some ideas that have uh, hopefully been fed to me by these comments. But in the meantime, help me solve the uh problem. And also, if you would like a certain song for me to recite the lyrics to with the Brazilian accent, that's what I usually do as the culmination of the lesson so that I uh, have uh, something to practice whenever I need a refresher. Usually, I like the songs to be either something that brings out a new meaning to the song in a uh, beautiful and moving way or in an ironic and uh, snickerworthy way. So uh, have at it. Please put it in the comments and I will see you next month.